Today I'm modifying one of my head assemblies uh, to work on that uh, tape that had all that damage that I had to splice uh, extensively. Uh, this is a glue head that I use to work on the glue tapes with that are contaminated with the old scotch uh, glue and what I've done here of course you can't see this really without a microscope but uh, on the leading edge of each of the four tips I uh, flattened out the chamfer a little bit and what that looks like is uh, let's see if I can draw a picture here okay uh, a normal tip would be looking at it from the side would look something like that and this is a chamfer an edge chamfer and all that means is you know instead of having a sharp corner here that it's been ground off or it's been polished to have a kind of a gradual well I went a little bit further on these tips and uh, used a piece of uh, diamond lapping film and so on my glue head it looks like this now Let's see if I can draw this right I'm taking some of this uh, these corners off and I've rounded them and this is the leading edge of the tip so this is the part that comes in contact with the tape first as it's rotating uh, and you know that that's uh, it doesn't have any real effect on the performance of the tip as far as magnetically or you know response wise but uh, if you have any anything on the tape any any residue or any build up that maybe you couldn't get off or it won't come off this is a little less resistance than this you know at that speed you want the least amount of resistance that you can have you know for any ear surface irregularities that the glue may may cause and uh, you know that seems to help a little bit uh, not having so much of a pronounced angle and have a little more of a rounded feature on the leading edges of these these uh, tips on the drum and uh, so what I'm going to do today is uh, the uh, the damaged parts of the tape are just a few feet maybe six feet each and there's two parts that were damaged uh, what uh, you know obviously we couldn't play their the damaged parts are so fragile they will feed through the machine okay if the guide 
is not engaged with the head drum. And uh, so what we're wanting to do basically is to uh, recover the audio track intact, which that's doable as long as we don't run that part against the head, the spinning head drum. And so what I'm going to do is we're going to take this little cover plate off of the connector here. And this is where two of the wires from the, the guide solenoid that engages this guide when in play. I'm going to break that circuit and bring it out to a switch so I can manually turn this solenoid off and disengage this guide uh, while the tape is in motion in the playback mode and once the bad part clears the guide then I can re-engage the guide and go on playing. Now how we can do this is uh, if we do this in play mode the control track is still going to be uh, receiving control track pulses and if we run the guy of uh, the the uh, servo mode in horizontal mode on the Ampex 1200 or the 2000 then uh, if we disengage the tape the servos will still remain locked because we're still feeding them control track in horizontal mode now I won't do that in auto mode because uh, you know when you re-engage the tape with the head the first thing auto is going to do is look for that vertical interval to re-lock uh, well we don't want to do that we don't want to lose lock we just want to go off save the audio and then right back on with the picture.
Okay, so now we have removed one of the solenoid wires from this pin and we have it have it free now. Now we have our, our on off switch for our guide solenoid all soldered into place and uh, so basically we just put a switch in series with the solenoid uh, so we can turn it off and open up the guide and let the uh, the bad sections of the tape pass on through 